بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين شر لا إله إلا الله وأتلا شرك الله وأشر محمد عبده ورسوله مع بعض والسلام عليكم ما شاء الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعل المسلمين ما شاء الله Did you think this was going to be in English? <laughs> what I just did with you just now is what I do in all of our programs throughout the world. And that is to begin as Muslims should begin with the Arabic, praising Allah and thanking Him, bearing witness to the oneness of Allah and that He's the only one worthy to be worshipped and that I bear witness Muhammad is his last and final messenger, thanking Allah for making us Muslims, and then softening my audience a little bit by telling them a little joke. This is something that I have been using for a number of years, and I have found that it's very effective in helping call people to Allah. Our subject and topic tonight is how to call people to Islam, in general and specifically those who are people of the book, the Jews and the Christians. Now, as I go along, if you see something that you enjoy, you think that's pretty funny, then you're welcome to laugh. If you see something that make you want to cry, well, just bust right out and bawl, that'll be okay too. And uh, if you get really, really excited, we're going to ask you, don't clap, though. Follow the sunnah and follow the ways of the early Muslims and just say, Allahu Akbar. Don't go like this. Go like this. Allahu Akbar. Let me hear you say, Allahu Akbar. Allah. Oh, that wasn't very loud. No, 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 no. We're going to try that, do that again. In our country, they need you to give them the starting point. So they say, Takbir. In Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the complete and total deen 1400 years ago with the advent and the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm sure there's not a Muslim on this earth that doesn't know that the Quran was sent down in the month of Ramadan and that began the prophethood of Muhammad. And for the next 23 years the revelation continued piece by piece, bit by bit, until all of it came. And then in its final culmination, the last, one of the very final ayahs to come, the verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah that says, Al yawmul akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmantu alaykum ni'mati wa raditulakum islam And this completes more or less the revelation of the Quran and ends revelation to mankind which had started with Adam continuing with Abraham, then Moses on Mount Sinai, David and Solomon with their Psalms, and then with Jesus with his Injil, his good news, the Bashar, and then finally Muhammad as the last and the final counselor, spirit of truth, and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, the statements that I just used are part of how we present the message to the people of the book because they will immediately identify with some of the things that I said. Muslims also will identify with the same thing. Other references that I like to use are references to the common words that are found in the Bible, in the Old and New Testament, and also found in the Quran and authentic hadiths of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let me use one of them right now and see if this helps you. Messiah. One of the questions that I addressed to the first Muslim I met and really talked to was, do you believe in God? And he said, yes. I said, yeah, but do you believe in the God of Abraham? He said, yes which is kind of funny because he's from the Ahl Bayt. It's his own grandfather. Do you believe in your grandfather? I asked him, do you believe in Jesus? I was sure he would say no, but he said yes. I said, yes, but you don't believe in the miracle birth? He said, oh, yes, we do. But you don't believe he's coming back in the last days? He said, oh, yes, we do. 
said, yes, but you don't believe he's the Messiah. He said, we have it in our book. Yes, we do believe it. I said, this is amazing. Can I say Jesus is the Christ? Some Muslims said, no. Really? Do you know what Christ means, where it comes from? The word Christ is not really from an English source. It's not Latin. It comes from Kone Greek, Christos. Christos, and they knock off the os at the end of it, Christ, and became pronounced Christ. What does Christos mean? It means one who is anointed or chosen or appointed to a particular post or job, a high post. And in this case, this was what was done during the times of the kings of Israel. What they used to do as a ceremony to induct their new king was to anoint his head with zaytun, the oil of the um, olive, and they would put it on his forehead up there and wipe his forehead. And this action in Hebrew is called what? The same as it's called in Arabic. What is this? Mes. Mes. And he's Messiah. The Messiah. What does it say in the Quran? Messiah. The same thing. It's not just like it, it is it. That is it. Is Jesus the Messiah? Yes. Without doubt. I want to make that distinction with a person of the book for this reason. The Jews have been looking for the Messiah. The Christians believe that they have it in Jesus. Unfortunately, some of them think that we consider Muhammad is the Messiah, but we don't. It is clear. We know that Muhammad وسلم, is the Rasul and the Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Habib Allah, but not the Messiah. Because he himself, and also in Quran, acknowledged Jesus as the Messiah. Yes? This clears up a huge misconception right away. Because we can use a common term. And then they can relax and understand what we're talking about. Now, for the Jew, he's going to say, yes, I understand, but I'm not going to accept it. Because the Jews at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu also understood and they didn't accept it either. Only a few. Now I like to tell them the story about Abdullah bin Salam. And I'm sure most of you know this story very well, but I'll just mention it to remind us about it. This was one of the scholars, the rabbis, the leaders of the Jews, the Bani Israel there in Medina at that time. And when he wants to enter into Islam, he tells Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't uh, announce to my people yet. Don't announce right away to them. See what they say about me. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asks the people. Now he's not there. See, he's not in front of them. He asks the people, what about Abdullah bin Salam? What, what did they say about him? He's the best of us. He is the most knowledgeable of us. He's the most righteous of us. He's the son of the best of us. He's the son of the most knowledgeable of us and the son of the most... They're given this big, <laughs> beautiful introduction for Abdullah bin Salam. What would you say, though, if he became a Muslim? And they said, may Allah save him from that. Audhu <laughs> Billah. And then he came and he entered and he said, Ashadu ila ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad or Rasulullah. I bear witness in open testimony. There's only one God, one deity to worship, and that's Allah. And I bear witness Muhammad is his messenger. The fulfillment of the prophecy. Muhammad is the 
final and last messenger. This is the understanding of a shadow of Muhammad Rasulullah. Which means automatically you accept Jesus as the Messiah, the Messiah. And look what they said. Did they say, Hallelujah, let's follow Abdullah bin Salam. He's our leader, let's go. The son of the best of us, the righteous of us, the not yet. No, they said, watch this. He's the worst of us. <laughs> the son of the worst of us. The ignorant from us and the son of the most ignorant of us. Something like this. By sharing this story, I do two things. I take them back in time and let them understand that there was, there's always been history of those who accept Islam, but those who reject it. And let them realize that things haven't really changed that much either. Another story I love to share with them is the story of Adi ibn Hatim, the Christian who came to Islam, and this is in reference to shirk. This is the shirk which is committed by both the Jews and the Christians. I want them to understand how important it is to worship Allah alone without any partners. La ilaha. Yeah, you got to help me here. This is your program too. So when I call on you, you got to jump up and go for it. Okay. La ilaha. ilaha. Muhammad ar Rasulullah. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Now anyway, I want them to understand the depth of this. What does it mean? It doesn't just mean God is one. Whoa, another Muslim. He said God is one. Okay, okay, great. Good to go. No, it doesn't work like that. And I even give them the example, by the way, that suppose we're going down the road and we said, uh, look, there's a hitchhiker. Let's pick him up, give him a ride, and on the way, we'll give him the da'wah. We'll call him and try to get him to come to Islam. Okay, pick him up. Hitchhiker gets in the car. Along the way, we go, oh, by the way, do you believe in God? Yep, sure do. Ah, oh, you do? Well, you know, God is one. He said, that's right, I believe in only one God. Yeah, we got him. This is it. And, oh, oh, wait, there's one thing we forgot. Oh, yeah, and we only worship that God. He said, yep, me too. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, and all the praises for him, all the thanksgiving, to, yep, 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 that's it. Just one God, one God. We call him Allah. He said, I call him Shakakwa. <laughs> well, that's okay, I guess. Shakakwa's okay. But, uh, you know. And as we're going along, you know, through the forest, you know, and he said, stop, stop, stop the car! So, wh what happened? He jumps out of the car. He runs over to a big, tall tree. He makes sajda to this big tree. He's making such it to this tree. And you're thinking, hmm, maybe this is a sutra for him. You know, a block. <laughs> could be. Could be. Could be he's doing shukr Allah, but shukr a shakwa or whatever. <laughs> when he comes back to the car, you go, uh, excuse me, um, what was that? He said, this is my worship to almighty shakakwa. <laughs> uh, Okay, that's nice. Um, this only place you do that? He said, of course this is the only place to do that. There's in front of that tree? He said, that was no tree, that was Shakakwa. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> no. So you have to, when you talk about the Tawheed al-Islam, the true monotheism, the real monotheism, you have to make some clarifications. First and foremost is that when we talk about Allah, we're talking about the real God. The real, real God. The one they use the big G for. Not the little G, the big G. <clears throat> they don't have a word in English for Allah. And so I tell them that. Your language is weak, daif. You don't have a word for Allah. You have a word for God. God. But how do you make a difference between an Elah and an Allah? Elah, God. That's clear. Alilah, the God. Aliha, gods. Goddesses, female. You have words in English for everything like this, but when we say Allah, you don't have a word for it. 
So you've been substituting a word for the Hebrew and for the Aramaic and now you're trying to do the same for the Arabic and you've been just using the same thing. God putting a big G and hoping you could get away with that. But it doesn't work because if you start a sentence, any sentence in English has to start with what? Capital letter. So now if you start with the word God, I don't know which one you meant. God, God, or God, God. In fact, I'm confused now. <laughs> and what about when you're talking to somebody, they can't see that big Jesus like, God! <laughs> what? You don't have a word. Why don't you do, this is what I tell them, why don't you do what the Arab Christians do? They go, huh? Yes, there are Arab Christians, many Arab Christians. In fact, probably everybody in this room knows somebody that's an Arab Christian, yes? We've all met Arab Christians, right? Okay. What do they call God with big G? Allah. Now, some of them don't want the other Christians to know about this in English. And they have actually denied it. They've said, oh, it's not the same God. Not the same God that we worship. No, no. See, but it's in your book. They trust that nobody can figure it out. They can't find it. But guess what? The Gideon Society has made that available for everybody. You can find out real easy. You know how? Just go to any hotel or motel on the planet and almost every one of them, when you pull the drawer out and look in there, there will be a what? A Bible. Placed by the Gideon Society. And may Allah guide them all. They did do a little something good. Turn six pages. And look. The translation to the Afrikaans language of a verse, for God so loved the world. Then go down to the next one, Arabic language. For Allah so loved the, oh, Alif Lam Lam Ha. There it is, right there in 50 million Bibles all over the world. You can go get one. Next time you're at a motel in one of those countries, just pull it out, and they don't mind. You can keep it. It's free, you know, and take it with you. And the next time somebody says something to you, that's not a law. You say, why does it say so in their book? You need to tell them to fix the problem. And if somebody said, well, that's New Testament. That's true, it is. That's John 3.16, the fourth gospel. No problem. But if you get an Arabic Bible for the Old Testament, you'll be even more surprised because in Genesis, the first 17 verses of Genesis have the word Allah 17 times. Whoops. So for sure, what they meant to say with the big G is what we're saying real clear with Alif Lam Lam Ha. Allah. When you do this, you do two things again. Now what happens is, you let them know that you have knowledge of their religion as well as your own, and you establish yourself as somebody who has common sense, and you're willing to open up other books and explain and share. No problem. We have no problem. They might say, well, I'm not going to open the Quran. Well, that's fine. Let us look in your book. We'll have no problem. The original Bible came from Allah. We'll be the first ones to tell you the Bible is from Allah. We'll be the first ones to tell you the Old Testament, it came from Allah. The New Testament, it came from Allah. No problem. We don't have a debate. We're happy to join you on this point. And then they say, well, what about where it says in the Bible so-and-so? You say, excuse me, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. You're speaking English, yes? You're quoting to me from an English book, yes? I, I don't agree that Allah sent down the Bible in English. So if you're going to quote it, we need to go back to exactly what Abraham had when he was on Mount Sinai. Do you have that? Even if he says he does, you tell him, no, your book says you don't. Your book clearly says that the 
scrolls and manuscripts that were in the Ark of the Covenant were all lost during the Babylonian exile. All of them. And they never found them to this day. And that's why Ezra had to listen to the different sects of uh, Beni Israel, there are different divisions they had, and he memorized from them, and that's how he recomposed the Bible. And if you doubt it, ask the Jewish scholars. That's where I learned it from, and it's in a book, Who Wrote the Bible, by Richard Elliot Friedman. And it's referred to on my website, shareislam.com. S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M dot com. That was a commercial, by the way. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Obviously, we don't really have any commercials because everything we have is free. Even uh, our programs, like this one that we're doing right now, we allow people to record them, but we don't copyright them, and we ask those who do this not to copyright it. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to a law. And ipso facto, that means it also belongs to all the Muslims everywhere. We ask that when you distribute it, that you not cut it up and take pieces out of context. Also, don't add other stuff from other speakers to our work because I'm not responsible for what other people say. In fact, sometimes I'm not responsible for what I say either. <laughs> but we do encourage you to copy and copy and copy and copy and distribute and distribute. And that's probably why I'm sitting here tonight because we've never ever charged. People felt comfortable to copy and distribute it. Our work has been going all over the world for a number of years because everybody knew it's okay to copy it, it's okay to give it out, and nobody cares. We're not trying to make money out of selling our religion. I think that's people in some other religions who do that. And I'm not interested in playing that game. Alhamdulillah. I want to return now to our subject in presenting uh, this message to these people. I've already established in their minds that I know something about their Bible at least, and also that we have some knowledge about the languages. Another important word that we always like to break down for them is the word Islam itself. And you can spend as long as you like on this because once you've made it clear let them ask you, and when you start answering, stop if they lose interest. Otherwise, you're never going to get anything with them. I, pro I promise you. You're not going to go anywhere with it. It's the youth. I know you know everything there is to know about everything, but just, you know, take it easy until you get a little bit of silver. I don't call this gray, by the way. It's not worth much. Silver's worth a lot, so, you know, <laughs> I'm but take it easy, guys. And our youth, a lot of you are gung-ho, you want to just change the whole world, and I'm proud of you for the energy, but direct that in the right way. Be careful with it, and don't be too quick to shoot off the gun of tech fear, because this is very dangerous, and I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm saying this because we're trying to give dawah now to non-Muslims, and you get into these things like this, and you're going to hurt your dawah right away. If you start talking about different groups, you're going to lose the person. If they ask you, I get this question all the time, which kind of Muslim are you? Oh, I get that all the time from non-Muslims. Are you one of them Shiites? Or are you one of them Sufis? Or one of them Sunnis? Some of them call them Sunnis. Are you one of the Sunnis? <laughs> My dad used to call me Sunny. <laughs> When I came back from a, a retreat that we did down in uh, Tecastatango in Mexico, which is close to Guadalajara, we established a, a place there with Omar Weston. It's called uh, Dar Salaam. And on the way back to the United States, customs grabbed me, and then the, the um, yeah, I, that's normal for them anyway. And, but they did it just by my face. Usually they do it with my passport because my number pops up, but they did it by face. I said, ah, come on here. I said, whoa. They set me down in a room, and you have to wait, and then they come in, you know. So they said, uh, so what kind of Muslim are you? <laughs> and 
And I thought I could get away with this. I said, I don't know what you mean. They said, yeah, you do. What kind of Muslim are you? I said, like, what do you mean? I said, are you one of those sunnies? I go, no. No, I just, you one of them Sufis? I go, no. Are you Shiite? No. Qadiani, Aga Khani? Uh-uh. They got the book in front of me. He's going, 5% of Rastafarian. <laughs> Hebrewish Muslim. <laughs> I see I'm not going anywhere until I come up with something. I'm thinking, what am I going to say? You want the Mojaves? You want the Salafis? I'm going, man, they, they know everything, you know. Got that book. <laughs> they miss nothing, you know. You're in the Quran Muslim mean? Are you with the Hamas? Are you with the Hezbollah? You... I'm going, wait, no, wait a minute, there's two I didn't hear about before. <laughs> you know? I'm supposed to be a Muslim chaplain. I'm supposed to know all of them, you know. And I said, whoa. They're not going to let up. What kind of Muslim are you? Okay, I'm a fat Muslim. <laughs> they didn't laugh. They tried again. What kind of Muslim are you? I said, old? <laughs> Still won't let up. All right, I confess. I'm a Christian Muslim. <laughs> So what's that? I said, well, I used to be a Christian. I became a Muslim. Oh, okay. They wrote something down. You can go. <laughs> it's time for an Allah Akbar here. Takbir! Allah! There we go. <laughs> Stick a commercial in there. Share Islam. S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M dot com. All right. Back to our program already in progress. <laughs> I'm having a good time with you guys. You're a lot of fun. I could wrap it up right here, but maybe I should give you a little bit more about that and, and before we end it. When people ask you these questions, like, for instance, what group are you in? The best, I believe, answer is to let them know there really is only one group. There's only one God, that's a law. There's only one universe. There's a complete universe, most of which we really don't know much about, but it's still one. There's always been one message to human beings, one prophethood. It started with Adam, it ended with Muhammad, but it was always the same thing. Call the people, and that's what we're talking about tonight. Call the people to la ilaha illallah. That's it. That's the real Islam. The surrender and the submission, the obedience and sincerity in peace to the one God. That's Islam. And whoever does it is an Islammer. Islammer. A sister, American sister in New York, heard a brother giving some lecture and telling sisters have to do this and that and and uh, you know so and so he was really getting carried away she turned to another sister and she said now is that Islam or his slam <laughs> but there's only one Islam isn't there and whoever does Islam they're a Muslim Muslim because in Arabic you don't use suffixes after the verb, you use a prefix before the verb. The letter mim pronounced mu. When somebody calls to the prayer, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, this is called the adhan. Hmm? And whoever does it's called the adhaner. <laughs> Muadhan. When somebody prays, sully, he's a sullier. Musalli. Mutakalam, huh? mm -hmm. the speaker. Musafir, the traveler, from the word suffer. So we understand when somebody does this action and they submit themselves totally to Almighty God on His terms in peace, they have done what? They committed the action of Islam and they became a. a what? A who? You want to be a what? 
I use that one too in my programs. It's called Instant Shahada for everybody. I'll wrap it up there and go, no. <laughs> as long as they understood this message, you've done your job. You have done your job. Did you communicate to them there's one God and do what he wants you to do? If you'd like to carry it a step further, just a little bit further, you can ask them, do you have a prayer in your Bible that tells you how to pray to Almighty God? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They all have memorized this. They don't know much else, but they memorize this almost like we memorize Ayat Kursi. When you come to that part, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means Islam. Do God's will, not your will. Don't give in to your desires. Don't give in to your lusts. Do the commandments and then ask them, do you know about the Ten Commandments? What is the first commandment? The first commandment, it's in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5. Just go read it, check it out for yourself, and it says, Thou shalt not have any other gods beside God. The worship is for who? One God. Now some will say, well, that's Old Testament. That's true, it is. That's for the Bene Israel. Yep. So what does the Bible say in the New Testament? And I'll give you the reference to that one for sharing with these people. Mark 12, 29. Jesus was asked sarcastically, what's the greatest commandment? And he responded, it is to know, O Israel, you can see who he's talking to, Ben Israel, to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. How many? Everybody heard that? One? One Lord? One. And you have to worship him with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. Some translations say you have to love him with all your mind and heart and all your strength. And this also is in Islam, yes or no? So show them, you have this, do you do it? They say, yeah, but three. You don't have three. It's not in your book. This came later. Our book is the last and the final revelation. The Quran came in the same exact family of languages as your Bible did. It came in the Semitic language of Arabic. Your book came in Aramaic. The Jewish came in Hebrew or Eber and all of them said the same thing. La ilaha. There's no difference until somebody makes a difference. If you know about the first and second Maccabees in the Catholic Bible that doesn't appear in the Protestant Bible, you know, you know already that there are differences that were brought about by their scholars of their times. What they used to divide up the people to try to call them to their particular Minhaj or Methab. They did that. The Jews did it, the Christians did it, they have so many divisions. So if you see Muslims dividing into groups, realize they're doing the same mistake as their predecessors. It's not acceptable in God's plan for you to make a new religion. He has one for you. He's defined it for you. He told you the name of it in Adina in the Lahil Islam. And if somebody would like something other than Islam, وَمَمْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامَ الدِّينَ فَلَا يُكْمَلَا مِنْ هُوَ هُوَ فِي الْأَخِرْتِ مِنْ الْخَاسِرِينَ He's never going to accept it. And most people are going to be with the losers. I'm going to end now with what I started with. I started out by talking to you how the last of the Quran came. It's the same in the beginning as it is in the end. And there's never any difference. Allah said on this day, I have perfected for you your complete way of life. 
and I have conferred upon you nitmiti, the possessive form of nama, my biggest nama, the biggest of all favors on you, and have chosen for you to submit, to surrender, to obey in sincerity and peace to the will of Almighty God. And may Allah put us on that deen too. Amen. Amen. May Allah make us of the people who understand this deen Amen. and share this deen Amen. as the early people understood it and shared it. Amen. Amen. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hu Alladhi Jalan Muslimin Wassalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh Subhanakallahu Alaikum Alaikum Sharwada Ilaha Alaikum Astaghfirullah Wa Atubu Alaikum Stay. I can't hear you. What? You want to hear you what? What do you think? Should we stay? Okay, he said okay. Uh, there was a lady, by the way, they're setting up and changing out their cameras, getting ready to do you know, a second part here. So what's uh, going on? There was a lady. It's not Muslim. She's been communicating with one of our Muslim brothers here, in, right here in the Eastern Province, through email. And he told her, I have to go somewhere tonight to a program. And she said, oh, well, I hope you have good success with your program. As an afterthought, she put me in there. Unless it's one of those programs where you're trying to convert Christians. In this case, I hope you're not successful. <laughs> and he wrote back and he said, well, it is. As a matter of fact, and we have an ex-preacher who's going to be given the program. <laughs> Often we have folks who sit in the crowd who already know everything there is to know about everything in Islam and all they have time to do really is just watch and see if we make a mistake. And I always delight them because I always make sure to make one mistake or more for them. So those mistakes that you saw were probably intentional. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> Kind of like, yeah. <laughs> the most common question we always get, it says, how did you get to Islam? That's the most common question. Tell us about your story coming to Islam. How many of you already have heard it or watched it or read it? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, about half the people here have already heard it. Well, now I have to tell you what Joha said. Joha? Yeah, you're not. <laughs> Bledashem, Humsi, Joha. You got it? All right. This is the famous character that people from the area called Bledashem, they always talk about this guy. But unless they're from Syria, because he's usually associated with Hums, which is in Syria, but if they're from there and they say, no, he's Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> we won't mention anybody's name who might be like that, by the way. His name is Ahmed al Kurdi. Kurdi, you know Kurdistan, huh? Yeah. It touches Syria and Turkey, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyhow, I want to tell you what Joha said. They asked Joha to give a speech. He didn't want to give the speech. He said, give a speech, give a speech. Oh, he got up there in front of the people and said, you know what I'm going to talk about? They said, yeah, go ahead. He said, you know, everybody know? They said, yeah, we all know. He said, then I don't need to talk about it. And he left. <laughs> they got him up there another time. He said, come on, come on, give a speech. And he got up there and he said, you know what I'm going to talk about? Well, they learned their lesson. They said, no, we don't. He said, then why should I waste my time? And he left. <laughs> they got him up there again. They said, Come on, give a speech. Come on, man. And he got up there and he said, Okay, you know what I'm going to talk about? Half of them said, Yes, we do. The other half said, No, we don't. He said, Okay, those of you that know, tell the ones that don't know. And he left. <laughs> so those of you that know the story about how I got to Islam, you can tell the rest of them. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Uh, 
as one of my souvenirs from Hajj. <laughs> Anyhow. If a group speaks to a group, it doesn't convey the message. It's better one man speaks the whole group. It's time for housekeeping. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, by the way, you can get the whole story on our website, shareislam.com, S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M.com. And thank you for giving me a chance to do my commercial again. <laughs> Said, it's, this qu question asks about the Trinity. And then it asks about the different divisions in Christianity and their differences. And it says that these differences should point, should be the first point to start with. Oh, I thought it was a question. Oh, no. What should be the first point to start with? Oh, okay. I have my thumb over it. I'm sorry. Well, sometimes people do send up. It doesn't have a question. They just tell me what to do. I'm used to that. My wife does it all the time. By the way, you, everybody knows who I am, right? Everybody know who I am? Huh? Yeah. No, no, no. My name's Yusuf. My name's, can you say Yusuf? Yeah. You got it right on the first time. All these years, my wife still pronounces it useless. <laughs> the Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. Not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. But it is mentioned in the Quran. And I love to say it like that. Because they go, huh? I said, yes, the Quran clarifies your book for you. Let's look in the Quran and we'll find how to deal with these things. The word Bible is not in the Bible. But it's in the Quran. Many times it says kitab, 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 kitab. You know what the word Bible means? They don't know. They say, the holy book of God. No, it doesn't mean that. It comes from Greek, biblios. It means book. That's all it means. And they put a big B, just like they use a big G on God. But it means book. <laughs> We're the ones that give it the proper distinction, Al-Kitab, which means the book. And they are the Al-Kitab, people of the Bible. So, Bible is mentioned over and over and over and over, and they're mentioned, Jews and Christians, and also people of the book, with such nice reference throughout the Quran. Even some of them are called believers in the Quran. Yeah. How many of you didn't know that? Anybody didn't know that? That they were called believers in the Quran. Present tense of the verb. Some of them are believers. Yes? I'll give you one clue. It's in Surah Al Imran, chapter, 100, uh, chapter 3, verse 110. And you know the beginning of it. Kuntan Khaira Umatin. Ukrajedlan Nas. Tat Maruna Bil Maruf. Watan Hauna Anhil Munkar. Watumi Nuna Bila. Aha. Somebody does know the rest of the verse. When you get a big enough crowd, you can find one. <laughs> Most of us stop right there because we didn't know. The rest of it said, and if the people of the book had believed it would have been better for them. From them are those who have Iman. But most of them at Tharahum are Fasikun. They're Fasik. Which didn't say Kafir. It says disobedient. And that's very true. So, another question is going to come up all the time. They ask about these differences. Should we talk about their differences and so on. If you want to use that, you're going to run into a problem yourself. Because if you said, oh, okay, you guys divided up into so many groups, that should make you know right there your religion's wrong. What will you do when they point to all the divisions in Islam? What will you say? Huh? The Prophet ﷺ told us as the Jews and Christians divide up into so many groups, we're going to divide even more and all of them are going to be in the fire in the wide, except for one. 
And that's the one that me and my companions are on today, yes or no? So if you already know that, don't use that as a criterion because you've just proven yourself wrong. If they ask you, you tell them that's a prophecy. That's a prophecy of Muhammad that we would divide up and all of them are going to go to hell except one. Now this makes some people angry, by the way, when I come to this point, because I wrote an article about this on the internet. It's been there for years, called Groups. And everybody's happy with you until you get to the group thing and you go, eh, don't you mention my group. Oh, you can mention the Sufis and the Goofies, but don't you come to my group. Huh? Okay, Shiite, you can mention those guys. Don't you come to my group. But when they ask me again, I'll mention my, when I come back to the country, they'll ask me, are you a Sunni? I say, no, I am not. Why? Well, I'm not going to leave out the Quran. That the God we're talking about is the same one. You've already clarified that this God is not something in the creation. He is not like his creation. He's outside of his creation. You can use many of the verses in the Quran and in the Bible about that. But now we come to the word Islam and we talk about what's our relationship with Almighty Allah. And that's what's really important. Once you know there really is a God, it's logical that you should be asking, why did he create me? What is my position? What should I be doing about it? You're a Muslim, you already know what Allah said in Surah al -Duriyah. He says, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنْ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُ He only created us to worship Him. Now, did you see what I just did? Pay attention to that. I did not give Yusuf Ali's translation, nor did I give Marmaduke Pictol's translation nor anybody else's because the actual translations almost always say that Allah says that he did not we it's in the form of we not no like you know it's like the we Khalakna saying that we did not create jinn and mankind except for worship but I didn't leave it like that did I I said, us, and I said, Allah. Now right away, somebody who has been studying translation of the interpretation of the Quran will try to correct me, usually right in front of the person I'm trying to help him get to him to Islam. No, Sheikh, you left some words out. I translated it exactly the way I wanted to use it for that purpose. Why? Because if you said, we, how come Allah is we? How come there's more than one? Oh my God, what's that all about? Or our, or us, and Allah uses that in the Quran, but it's the royal we. You know that, but do you want to stop now and start explaining that to everybody? Now if you've already done that in the beginning of your program when you were talking to them, that's fine. But what are you going to do if you didn't? Now you got to stop, digress, break it down. Royal we, the queen says, this is how the king, you know, la 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 la, uh, 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 and you lost them. The bus pulls up, they get on and ride away, and you, your dawah is gone. So that's why when you're presenting it, you present the concept of what was said. And it's the same concept. What about the jinn? You didn't mention the jinn. Jinn. No, you didn't say it. Did I say us? That's included. I left the we out of Allah, but I put the we in the jinn and us, okay? And guess what? It works for the purpose. I didn't say I'm going to give you the translation of the meaning of the Quran in one session. What I said was the purpose of our <coughs> the purpose of our life is to worship Allah. That's my only point. It's still the same point. It's still valid, isn't it? Yeah. What I'm saying here is, don't nitpick. Don't get in such detail. 
on things that you just met somebody, you want to give them the concept of Islam. No, when they study and learn more about it, great. But initially, you're just trying to touch the top of the subject. Don't pretend to be a scholar. Don't play like you know everything. And don't bore them to death. You know, somebody's trying to be nice to you. You were kind to them. You were kind of funny in the beginning. Everything was going along pretty good. Then all of a sudden they're going, how did I get in this conversation with this guy? Oh, good God. And they're, they're going like, you know, that's, yeah, oh, it's very interesting. It's very nice. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, uh, well, give us your card and we'll see you much later. <laughs> Don't bore them to death. That's my... Uh, advice. You have some points. Get to your point. Point number one. We believe in Allah. Allah is one. He has no partners. He's not like the creation. If you compare him to the creation, that's not Allah anymore. Point number two. Relationship between us and him is what? Who's the boss? Allah or you? Oh, duh. That's real easy. I mean, you know, they'll know that right away. They understand it. It's not a problem. Anybody goes on a job, Anybody goes anywhere, goes to work, doesn't matter what capacity, there's a boss and an employee. And if you're the employee, you don't tell the boss what to do. You can imagine this guy show up the first day and he's filling out the papers. He goes, these papers are too complicated. I want them to be much easier. And um, I just want to use a pencil. I don't want to use a pen for that. Oh. Huh. And the salary has to be a lot higher. I want this and hours. I don't want to work that much. And there you go. That's what I want right there. How long is he going to last? <laughs> you betcha. Oh. Because that's the boss who does that, not the employee. He comes in and tells you, hey, fill this full paper out. You don't leave any blanks on it. Use a pen when you fill it out, and we'll get back to you if we want you. Goodbye. That's how it works. So if you understood that concept, why would you think anything less of the creator and sustainer of the universe? And regarding the ibadah, the worship itself, Again, let's look at the job. Could you go to the job and say, you know, I don't, I don't think we should put all these posts in here. That's too many posts. Cost too much money. Take that one out. That, let's don't build the building that way. And just, you know, uh, I think we don't need so much cement in here. Use more dirt. Huh? And by the way, what's my position? Oh, I'm the guy that hauls out the trash. <laughs> SubhanAllah. A low position? Telling the people, the, the big people, what to do. It doesn't work like this. Nobody accept that. Huh? SubhanAllah. And how about the architect of the universe? We respect an architect to put up a big building here in the kingdom, yes? You, you respect that. This guy, wow, spent these years, look what he did, his accomplishment, look at this grand edifice that he's proposing here. Wow. And it's just a human building a little stick out in the desert. But how about when Allah builds a universe and have you ever really looked at it and thought about the size, how our earth is just a teeny tiny dot compared to some of the suns that are out there. And the suns are teeny tiny dots compared to solar systems that are there in place. And all of it together in the Milky Way is a dot compared to the whole universe. You're like, whoa. And you're going to tell Allah what's ibadah? The end of Ayatul Kursi scares me when I think about it. And what was said about this, and I share this with the Jews and Christians when the time comes to let them think about who is the creator and sustainer of the universe, and we talk about the size of the macro. Look at the universe. Look at the solar system. Look at the stars. Look at it. 
And then look under the microscope at the molecules and look and think about the atoms, the protons, neutrons, electrons. Look at what's happening under both of these great magnifiers. You see spheres going in orbits, moving. Both cases, the same system, the same way. Who could do such a thing? Even the scientists today have had to admit there's intelligent design and they call it ID. You have no room to argue in the favor of atheism anymore. You can't because they've admitted themselves that there's something else out there, something bigger, something much more than they know. On our website, Alhamdulillah, we have videos, videos that were done by Sheikh Zandani, who is a great scientist of the world. And we put them there, they're in English, and we invite people, go and watch. And they come away shaking their heads going, what can I say? What can I say? Atheists come back and their tongue doesn't move anymore. They stop insulting Allah with the tongue that Allah gave them. Because in the number seven, we have seven of them on there, six or seven. The last one, all of them saying, this must be from Allah. The Quran has to come from Allah. Some of you have seen those. But the last one is the amazing one because during the speech, he stops. And he says, I guess it's time for me to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al Rasulullah. An atheist scientist accepts Islam right there in front of their eyes. What can they say? What can they do? It's there. So when we're explaining, we're just taking it easy. Taking it easy, but we're leading up to what? We're always leading up to the relationship between them and Allah. What should be the relationship between the master and the servant? Because that's the relationship implied by the word Islam. Immediately, the word Islam comes from the verb Aslama, which comes from the root Silm, Sin Lam Mim. And you ask some of the Muslims that speak some English, what does Islam mean? What does it mean? They say, Islam means peace. <laughs> May Allah guide them. This is so easy for a detractor of Islam to hurt you, to put you down if you say that. Really? Islam means peace? Oh yeah? Then how come when you greet each other you say Salaam Alaikum instead of Islam Alaikum? You just messed up. What will you do now? Because you've lost credibility. You said something that they can point to and say, He doesn't know. Let's go. He doesn't know. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. So take it easy and think before you open your mouth. Muslims are commanded not to answer questions unless you really know the answer. And you don't know the answer unless you know the source and the location. Otherwise you say, I don't know. But we can find out. That's what we're supposed to say. There are three words in the English language that the people of the West have a difficult time saying, very difficult time to say. And that's evident when a man gets married and he goes to work and then all of a sudden he gets a phone call at work. And I thank the brother that turned his phone on so that I could play into that. That was just on time. I know he only did that for that purpose. Obviously, he's going to turn it off as are all of you. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. The Lord guide us. He gets a phone call at work and he's embarrassed. It's his wife checking up on him, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I have to get back to work now. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll pick it up on the way home. Okay. Okay, bye. Huh? Uh, yeah. Me too. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, honey, I'm at work, and yeah, me too, I, mm -hmm, me, I, uh, mm, you know, all the folks are looking at him now going, <laughs> and he goes, mm, I love you too. It's hard, real hard. He can't, I don't know why people in the West, they just don't want to say I love you. They don't want to, we say it all the time. I love you for Allah. We say it all the time to each other. And when we're with our families, it's no problem. I love you. It's, it's easy. I love my children. I say, I love you. We, we don't have a problem with those three words. But we have a problem with three other words. We just cannot say these three words. Somebody come up to you and ask you a question. Any question about Islam, right away. Even if you don't know. Why? Because the three words we can't say is, I don't know. Uh, I think it was Imam Malik who had a visitor who came, I think, from Yemen. And they asked some questions. And out of the questions they asked, a lot of them he didn't have the answer for. And he said, I don't have the answer to these. And they said, well, how are we going to go back? And what are we going to tell the people when we go back? We didn't get the answer. He said, you tell them Imam Malik doesn't know the answer to those questions. Who here thinks they know more about Islam than Imam Malik? Anybody? Okay, so why we can't say, I don't know? People have much more respect for you than if you guess and say the wrong thing. Islam does not mean peace. And if you say it, You'll be eating those words before you end your conversation because they'll throw it right back in your face. Islam is something better and bigger and carries a lot more weight than just the word peace in English. Islam contains five English words all at once that work together in a system. Surrender. Submission. Obedience, sincerity, and peace. So peace is in there, yes. But it's not peace on earth, goodwill to man. Not peace in the Middle East. It's peace between you and Almighty Allah. And you don't get that until you do the other four. And subhanAllah, even some Muslims don't have that. They don't think about it. A person tell you, I'm a Muslim. You say, okay. But we've been working with you here on the job for a number of years. We didn't know you were a Muslim. When we go pray, you never do pray. He said, well, I'm a Muslim. But I don't pray. Said, Ugh. How? When Rasul Sallallahu said, Laysa Minha. He's not from us who leave Salah. And what about Ramadan? Here we are, we're in the month of Ramadan, and you're telling me you're a Muslim and you don't fast? What you doing sitting there drinking that bibzi? <laughs> he said, I'm a Muslim, but I don't fast. <laughs> what about zakah? Do you pay your zakah, brother? Allah knows my heart. I love Allah. <laughs> But Rasul Sallallahu ordered us, we have to pay the zakah. But uh, I don't, uh, you know, uh, Allah knows my heart. <laughs> Allah says, Kul in kuntum tuhi bun Allah fatabi yuni yubbikum Allah. Wa yagfir lakum danubakum. Allahu gafur rahim. Tell him, this is what Allah is telling Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell him, if you really love Allah, follow me, Rasul Sallallahu Then, and only then is Allah going to love you. So this answers immediately the question, well, what about these people who are Christians and Jews and they do some good deeds and blah, blah. Do they follow Rasul Sallallahu But they love Allah. Do they follow Rasul Sallallahu 
So until and unless they got the understanding of Muhammad or Rasulullah and they fall in, they're not fulfilling their potential. That's the bottom line. And you ask him, what about Hajj? Do you make Hajj? Did you do Umrah? Did you do anything? Did you put on the two towels and go down? I mean, you know, you took a month off last year, took your bonus and your salary, you took your kids over to Florida and went to Disney World and you did tell off around Epcot Center for how long? <laughs> but you didn't make Hajj. He said, brother, I'm a Muslim, but... Oh, we get it. You're a Muslim, but... <laughs> That's good. That's good. You got part of a Muslim. The part you sit on. Oh, we need some legs, arms, a head. Mashallah, you could be a whole Muslim. At the same time, at the same time that I'm picking on the Muslims, I want to be careful that I don't do that in front of the new or the non-Muslims. Why? One of our brothers in Islam, a beautiful brother, we love him very much, Yusuf Islam, used to be Cat Stevens. And he read about Islam while he was in the hospital. He read the Quran. He made another with the law. He was drowning actually out in the California uh, Ocean, uh, Pacific. He said, if, if you get me back, I'll, I will worship you on your terms. And that's when Allah guided him to Islam. Because Allah got him back safely, he didn't drown. He told the story himself. But he said it was some years really before he ever met any Muslims. And his statement was, had I met Muslims first, Wallahi, I wouldn't be a Muslim. This means he had bad experience with some Muslims. And while it's true, I will tell Muslims, new Muslims, brand new Muslim, and people looking at Islam, if you get in Islam, Allah is going to give you a big test. Allah says in Surah Ankabut, do they think they'll be left alone on entering Islam and they won't be put into fitna? For sure Allah is going to put them in the test that he put the people before them in to show who are the sadiq, the truthful, and those who are called the, the liars. Now that's in the Quran. So I will tell them about that and I will tell them part of the fitna, part of the test, I'm sorry to tell you, is going to be us, the Muslims. Because, you know, don't look at Muslims to see what's Islam. I will tell them that. But I'm not going to insult all the Muslims by making a statement like that. Because it's not true. The majority of all the Muslims are actually good. That's the truth. Just as in the case of Americans. There are some bad Americans. That's true. But the majority of them are pretty good guys. They just don't know. It's actually up to us to get the message to them. But we haven't done our job. We've got a lot of good Muslims out there. A lot of good Muslims. Some of them are also a little bit ignorant about Islam. But again, that's not cause for me to try to pass judgment on them. It's cause for me to do what? Work harder to get the message out. And by the way, and this is to the youth. Listen to me. Don't try to convert the old people to your understanding of Islam. Don't do that. That's, it's not going to work. <laughs> They're going to get mad at you, and you're going to be in trouble. Just take it easy. You want them to learn something, show them with your good actions. Bribe them with your Let them ask you, and when you start answering, stop if they lose interest. 
But otherwise, you're never going to get anything with them. I, pro I promise you. You're not going to go anywhere with them. It's the youth. I know you know everything there is to know about everything, but just, you know, take it easy until you get a little bit of silver. I don't call this gray, by the way. It's not worth much. Silver's worth a lot, so, you know. <laughs> but take it easy, guys. And our youth, a lot of you are gung-ho. You want to just change the whole world, and I'm proud of you for the energy, but direct that in the right way. Be careful with it, and don't be too quick to shoot off the gun of fear because this is very dangerous and I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm saying this because we're trying to give dawah now to non-Muslims and you get into these things like this and you're going to hurt your dawah right away. If you start talking about different groups, you're going to lose the person. If they ask you, I get this question all the time, which kind of Muslim are you? Oh, I get that all the time from non-Muslims. Are you one of them Shiites? Or are you one of them Sufis? Or one of them Sunnis? Some of them call them Sunnis. Are you one of the Sunnis? <laughs> My dad used to call me Sunny. <laughs> when I came back from a, a retreat that we did down in uh, Tecas de Tango in Mexico, which is close to Guadalajara, we established a, a place there with Omar Weston. It's called uh, Dar Salaam. And on the way back to the United States, customs grabbed me, and then the, the um, yeah, I, that's normal for them anyway. Uh, but they did it just by my face. Usually they do it with my passport because my number pops up, but they did it by face. They said, ah, come on. I said, whoa. They set me down in a room, and you have to wait, and then they come in, you know. So they said, uh, so what kind of Muslim are you? <laughs> And I thought I could get away with this. I said, I don't know what you mean. They said, yeah, you do. What kind of Muslim are you? I said, like, what do you mean? They said, are you one of those sunnies? I go, no. No, I just, you one of them Sufis? I go, no. Are you Shiite? No. Khadiani, Agakani? Uh-uh. They got the book in front of me. It's going, 5% of Rastafarian. <laughs> Hebrewish Muslim. <laughs> I see I'm not going anywhere until I come up with something. I'm thinking, what am I say? You want the Mojaves? Uh, Salafis? I'm going, man, they, they know everything, you know. I got that book. <laughs> they miss nothing, you know. You in the Quran Muslimin? Are you with the Hamas? Are you with the Hezbollah? You... I'm going, wait, no, wait a minute, there's two I didn't hear about before. <laughs> you know. I'm supposed to be a Muslim chaplain. I'm supposed to know all of them, you know. And I said, whoa. They're not going to let up. What kind of Muslim are you? Okay, I'm a fat Muslim. <laughs> they didn't laugh. They tried again. What kind of Muslim are you? I said, old? <laughs> Still won't let up. All right, I confess. I'm a Christian Muslim. <laughs> So what's that? I said, well, I used to be a Christian. I became a Muslim. Oh, okay. They wrote something down. You can go. <laughs> it's time for an Allah Akbar here. Takbir! Allah! There we go. <laughs> Stick a commercial in there. Share Islam. S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M dot com. All right. Back to our program already in progress. <laughs> I'm having a good time with you guys. You're a lot of fun. I could wrap it up right here, but maybe I should give you a little bit more about that and, and before we end it. When people ask you these questions, like, for instance, what group are you in? The best, I believe, answer is to let them know there really is only one group. There's only one God, that's a law. There's only one universe. There's a complete universe, most of which we really don't know much about, but it's still one. There's always been one message to human beings, one prophethood. It started with Adam, it ended with Muhammad, but it was always the same thing. Call the people, and that's what we're talking about tonight. Call the people to la ilaha illallah. That's it. 
That's the real Islam. The surrender and the submission, the obedience and sincerity in peace to the one God. That's Islam. And whoever does it is an Islamer. Islamer. A sister, American sister in New York, heard a brother giving some lecture and telling sisters have to do this and that and, and uh, you know, so and so. He was really getting carried away. She turned to another sister and she said, now is that Islam or his slam? <laughs> but there's only one Islam, isn't there? And whoever does Islam, they're a Muslim. Muslim. Because in Arabic you don't use suffixes after the verb. You use a prefix before the verb. The letter meme pronounced mu. When somebody calls to the prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is called the Adhan. Hmm? And whoever does it's called the Adhaner. <laughs> Muadhan. When somebody prays Sully, he's a Sullier? <laughs> Musali. Mutikalam, huh? mm -hmm. the speaker. Musafir, the traveler, from the word suffer. So we understand when somebody does this action and they submit themselves totally to Almighty God on His terms in peace. They have done what? They committed the action of Islam and they became a... A what? A who? You want to be a what? I use that one too in my programs. It's called instant shahada for everybody. I'll wrap it up there and go, no. <laughs> as long as they understood this message, you've done your job. You have done your job. Did you communicate to them there's one God? And do what he wants you to do. If you'd like to carry it a step further, just a little bit further, you can ask them, do you have a prayer in your Bible that tells you how to pray to Almighty God? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They all have memorized this. They don't know much else, but they memorize this almost like we memorize Ayatul Kursi. When you come to that part, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means Islam. Do God's will, not your will. Don't give in to your desires. Don't give in to your lusts. Do the commandments and then ask them, do you know about the Ten Commandments? What is the first commandment? The first commandment, it's in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5. Just go read it, check it out for yourself, and it says, Thou shalt not have any other gods beside God. The worship is for who? One God. Now some will say, well, that's Old Testament. That's true, it is. That's for the Bene Israel. Yep. So what does the Bible say in the New Testament? And I'll give you the reference to that one for sharing with these people. Mark 12, 29. Jesus was asked sarcastically, what's the greatest commandment? And he responded, it is to know, O Israel, you can see who he's talking to, Ben Israel, to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. How many? Everybody heard that? One? One Lord? One. And you have to worship Him with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. Some translations say you have to love Him with all your mind and heart and all your strength. And this also is in Islam, yes or no? So show them, you have this, do you do it? They say, yeah, but three. You don't have three. It's not in your book. This came later. Our book 
is the last and the final revelation. The Quran came in the same exact family of languages as your Bible did. It came in the Semitic language of Arabic. Your book came in Aramaic. The Jewish came in Hebrew or Eber and all of them said the same thing. La ilaha. There's no difference until somebody makes a difference. If you know about the first and second Maccabees in the Catholic Bible that doesn't appear in the Protestant Bible, you know already that there are differences that were brought about by their scholars of their times that they used to divide up the people to try to call them to their particular Minhaj or Methab. They did that. The Jews did it. The Christians did it. They have so many divisions. So if you see Muslims dividing into groups, realize they're doing the same mistake as their predecessors. It's not acceptable in God's plan for you to make a new religion. He has one for you. He's defined it for you. He told you the name of it in Adina in the Lahil Islam. And if somebody would like something other than Islam, وَمَمْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ فَلَا يُكْمِلَا مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْأَخِرْتِ مِنْ الْخَاسِرِينَ He's never going to accept it. And most people are going to be with the losers. I'm going to end now with what I started with. I started out by talking to you how the last of the Quran came. It's the same in the beginning as it is in the end. And there's never any difference. Allah said on this day, I have perfected for you your complete way of life. And I have conferred upon you nitmati. The possessive form of nama, my biggest nama, the biggest of all favors on you, and have chosen for you to submit, to surrender, to obey in sincerity and peace to the will of Almighty God. And may Allah put us on that deen too. Amen. May Allah make us of the people who understand this deen and share this deen as the early people understood it and shared it. Amen. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hu Alladhi Jalan Muslimin Wassalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh Subhanakallahum Wa Andik Sharwila Ilaha Allah Astaghfirullah Wa Atubah Alaikum Stay. Stay. I can't hear you. Stay. What? Stay. You want to hear you more. What do you think? Should we stay? Okay, he said okay. Uh, there was a lady, by the way, they're setting up, they're changing out their cameras, it's getting ready to do, you know, second part here. So what's uh, going on? There was a lady. It's not Muslim. She's been communicating with one of our Muslim brothers here, right here in the Eastern Province, through email. And he told her, I have to go somewhere tonight to a program. And she said, oh, well, I hope you have good success with your program. As an afterthought, she put me in there. Unless it's one of those programs where you're trying to convert Christians. In this case, I hope you're not successful. <laughs> and he wrote back and he said, well, it is. As a matter of fact, and we have an ex-preacher who's going to be given the program. <laughs> Often we have folks who sit in a crowd who already know everything there is to know about everything in Islam and all they have time to do really is just watch and see if we make a mistake. And I always delight them because I always make sure to make one mistake or more for them. So those mistakes that you saw were probably intentional. <laughs> she like that? Kind of like, yeah. <laughs> the most common question we always get, it says, how did you get to Islam? 
That's the most common question. Tell us about your story coming to Islam. How many of you already have heard it or watched it or read it? Raise your hand. Want to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, about half the people here have already heard it. Well, now I have to tell you what Joha said. <laughs> Joha? Yeah, you're not. <laughs> Bled Hashem, Hamsi, Joha. You got it? All right. This is the famous character that people from the area called Bled Hashem, they always talk about this guy. But unless they're from Syria, because he's usually associated with Hams, which is in Syria, but if they're from there, they say, no, he's Turkish. <laughs> We won't mention anybody's name who might be like that, by the way. His name is Ahmed al Kurdi. Kurdi, you know Kurdistan, huh? Yeah. It touches Syria and Turkey, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I want to tell you what Joha said. They asked Joha to give a speech. He didn't want to give the speech. He said, give a speech, give a speech. Oh, he got up there in front of the people and said, you know what I'm going to talk about? They said, yeah, go ahead. He said, you know, everybody know? They said, yeah, we all know. He said, then I don't need to talk about it. And he left. <laughs> they got him up there another time. He said, come on, come on, give a speech. And he got up there and he said, you know what I'm going to talk about? Well, they learned their lesson. They said, no, we don't. He said, then why should I waste my time? And he left. <laughs> they got him up there again. They said, Come on, give a speech. Come on, man. And he got up there and he said, Okay, you know what I'm going to talk about? Half of them said, Yes, we do. The other half said, No, we don't. He said, Okay, those of you that know, tell the ones that don't know. And he left. <laughs> so those of you that know the story about how I got to Islam, can tell the rest of them. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> This is one of my souvenirs from Hajj. Anyhow. If a group speaks to a group, it doesn't convey the message. It's better one man speaks the whole group. It's time for housekeeping. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, by the way, you can get the whole story on our website, shareislam.com, S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M.com. And thank you for giving me a chance to do it in my commercial again. <laughs> said, it, this question asks about the Trinity. And then it asks about the different divisions in Christianity and their differences. And it says that these differences should point, should be the first point to start with. Oh, I thought it was a question. Oh, no. What should be the first point to start with? Oh, okay. I had my thumb over it. I'm sorry. Well, sometimes people do send up. It doesn't have a question. They just tell me what to do. I'm used to that. My wife does it all the time. <laughs> By the way, you, everybody knows who I am, right? Everybody know who I am? Huh? Yeah. No, no, no. My name's Yusuf. My name's, can you say Yusuf? <laughs> you got it right on the first time. All these years, my wife still pronounces it useless. <laughs> The Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. Not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. But it is mentioned in the Quran. And I love to say it like that. Because they go, huh? I said, yes, the Quran clarifies your book for you. Let's look in the Quran and we'll find how to deal with these things. The word Bible is not in the Bible. But it's in the Quran. Many times it says kitab, 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 kitab. You know what the word Bible means? They don't know. They say the holy book of God. No, it doesn't mean that. It comes from Greek, biblios. It means book. That's all it means. And they put a big B, just like they use a big G on God. But it means book. 
We're the ones that give it the proper distinction, Al-Kitab, which means the book. And they are the Al-Kitab, people of the Bible. So, Bible is mentioned over and over and over and over, and they're mentioned, Jews and Christians, and also people of the book, with such nice reference throughout the Qur'an. Even some of them are called believers in the Qur'an. Yeah. How many of you didn't know that? Anybody didn't know that? That they were called believers in the Qur'an. Present tense of the verb. Some of them are believers. Yes? I'll give you one clue. It's in Surah Al Imran, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 110. And you know the beginning of it. Kuntan Khaira Umatin, Ukrajet Nas, Tat Maruna Bil Maruf, Watan Hauna Anhil Munkar, Watumi Nuni Bila. Aha, somebody does know the rest of the verse. We get a big enough crowd, you can find one. <laughs> Most of us stopped right there because we didn't know. The rest of us said, and if the people of the book had believed it would have been better for them, from them are those who have Iman. But most of the Thorahom are Fasikun. They're Fasik. Which didn't say Kafir. It says disobedient. And that's very true. So, Another question that's going to come up all the time, they ask about these differences, should we talk about their differences and so on. If you want to use that, you're going to run into a problem yourself because if you said, oh, okay, you guys divided up into so many groups, that should make you know right there your religion's wrong. What will you do when they point to all the divisions in Islam? What will you say? Huh? The Prophet ﷺ told us as the Jews and Christians divide up into so many groups, we're going to divide even more and all of them are going to be in the fire in Lawahid, except for one. And that's the one that me and my companions are on today, yes or no? So if you already know that, don't use that as a criterion because you're just proving yourself wrong. If they ask you, you tell them that's a prophecy. That's a prophecy of Muhammad that we would divide up and all of them are going to go to hell except one. Now this makes some people angry by the way when I come to this point because I wrote an article about this on the internet. It's been there for years called groups. And everybody's happy with you until you get to the group thing and you go, eh, don't you mention my group. Oh, you can mention the Sufis and the Goofies, but don't you come to my group. Huh? Okay, Shiite, you can mention those guys. Don't you come to my group. But when they ask me again, I'll mention my, when I come back to the country, they'll ask me, are you a Sunni? I say, no, I am not. Why? Well, I'm not going to leave out the Quran. I follow the Quran and the Sunnah. <laughs> Anybody here only follows Sunnah? Duh! I'm a Muslim. That's it. Stop with that. I know some of the Tariqas out here, you'd be in big trouble for that. But you know, you have to give bayat to this sheikh and you have to, you know, wallah, yeah, yeah. I just tell them I'm not smart enough to do all that. I just keep it simple. What's the first point to start with, and I'm going to go back to what I told you in the speech, this is what the Prophet ﷺ told Muad ibn Jabal to do. When he appointed him as the governor of Yemen, and he sent him down, he said, I'm sending you to the people of the book, Jews and Christians. Teach them Tawheed. Let them understand the true meaning of La ilaha illallah. And that's what the companions had to deal with for 13 years. They didn't get into these intricacies of fiqh. They didn't get into the divisions of how you work with and dividing up the different kinds of zakah, inheritance. This wasn't the issue. The issue was what? Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. There's only one God to worship. And how do we understand that? By the way, if you want an easy website 
to really explain Tawheed, really make it easy for anybody. Many priests and preachers have already come to Islam from two websites that we use. GodAllah.com that's got the Tawheed covered. And the other one which compares Christianity to Islam called Islam Code. But both of these are at our main website, shareislam.com, S-H-A-R-E-I-S-L-A-M.com. <laughs> Next question. Somebody asked if we believe in the same God, why do I need to be a Muslim? <clears throat> We already discussed that, really. You can love God, but how do you know you're going to be loved back? But let me make it real easy. I want to make it easy for people to understand. Because if you start quoting hadiths to them, they're not going to understand that. They don't even know what a hadith is. If you start breaking down words out of the Quran to them, that's not going to make sense to them. They don't know Arabic. Muslims are even starting to say things like, well, you know, we all believe in the same God. Why can't we just get along, live in peace, let me get my degree, make some money, have a big house, and we'll all be a la di da di da Yes or no? And you know that's true. That's what's happening. So I want to make this so that it's clear, crystal clear. And I give him the example of the little boy who comes into his mother and he says, Mama, I love you. I love you, Mama. And she says, You know what? I love you too. But will you do something for me? I'll do anything for you, Mama. Okay. I want you to go out in the kitchen and I want you to wash the dishes for me. Because, you know, my diabetes is acting up. My legs are swelling. I can't stand out there and wash dishes. Will you please go wash the dishes? He's gone for a while, and he comes back. I love you, Mama. Did you wash the dishes? Nope. But I brought you some chocolate candy. She's diabetic, remember? She says, I can't eat that. He says, I know, but I can. And I got a good deal at the store. So he eat the candy. Does he love her? Or he loves himself? Next day, Mother, I love you. Will you please go out and mow the grass for me? I have hay fever real bad today. I can't go outside. It's killing me. He leaves. He comes back. Did you mow the grass? No. But I brought you some flowers. And she's got asthma. Huh? She said, get that away from me. You know I can't be around that. He said, I can, and I like these flowers. Who does he love? Yeah, and that's the same thing for anybody who say they love Allah, but they don't want to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not reciprocal, and Allah is not going to love you back because you have not loved him on his terms. His terms are a complete and total love that has nothing else in it whatsoever. It's mentioned in the Bible in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the New Testament. And it's mentioned in Islam the same way. Unless and until you reach the level where Allah is more to you than anything in this earth or anything in the universe, you have not submitted. When you can find anything on this planet which you take over Allah, you are no longer considered as a Muslim. Allah orders you to do something, you do it because He ordered you. He orders you not to do something, you don't do it because He ordered you. And you don't change His religion. Because if you do, you'll be the lowest of the low in the next life. This is mentioned in the Bible. This is mentioned in the Quran. This is clear from the monotheistic religions. Allah has one and only one way for salvation and redemption. It's to believe in Him as one, to make tawbah to Him, to repent to Him, and to be sincere in it, and to leave off sinning as much as you can. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. We already know that. But it does mean you're going to try your best. And you're going to also apologize and ask for forgiveness 
when you make mistakes. And you're not going to pass your mistakes off to somebody else and say, he died for my sins. You were responsible for what you did, not somebody else. And if you believe in God, and if you're trying to please God, and trying to obey His commandments, then you're already in Islam anyway, even if you didn't know what it was. So you don't have to change, you just have to make some corrections, like I did. Many Christians are so close to Islam, they just need to make some corrections. Straighten out the Aqidah, straighten out some of the actions that they do, leave off some things they've been doing, and then keep going with the enthusiasm, the excitement, and the dedication they already have to Christianity. And Prophet ﷺ said that the Christian that comes to Islam has double reward because they believed in Jesus and then they believed in Muhammad and the message with which he was sent. Double reward. But who hears the message? and rejects it. And this is in the tafsir of Wamam Yabtagi Gair al Islam Adina. The tafsir explains that the Rasul Sallallahu said, and it's in Sahih Bukhari, that whoever hears about me and this message from the Jews and Christians and they don't accept Islam, they will be in the fire. Once you've made it clear, you've understood it, you no longer have any option except to hear and obey. The two things that begin the story in the Bible, begin the story in Quran as far as the first human being, Adam salam, are similar. Adam and the devil. The devil was ordered to do something. What was he ordered to do? Bow down. Make sujood. Did he do it? No, he refused to do what Allah ordered him to do, yes? That was it. That was the only thing he did wrong, wasn't it? But he refused. Adam was ordered the opposite. Don't do something. Don't eat the fruit. Did he eat it? Yes. Did he repent? Yes, yes he did. He made Tawbah. Did the devil repent? No. Will he ever repent? No. no, it's already known from Hadith. He never will repent. That's the reason the devil is going to hell. It's not because he didn't make the sajda, it's because he won't repent afterwards. Nobody's perfect. Adam wasn't perfect. Devil's not perfect. Could the devil be forgiven given if he repented? Don't answer unless you know the source of this one. Say, I don't know. But if you know the hadith, then you can say, yeah, I know. There's two hadith. One, it's uh, talking about Moses, and the other one's talking about Isa al-Islam. From these two hadith, we know that Jesus asked, and Moses asked Allah about the subject. And Allah is willing to forgive even the devil. Even Iblis can be forgiven if he will just go to the grave of Adam and put his head down and say, Astaghfirullah. If he will do that, Allah will forgive him. But he won't do it. You know what he said? He said, if I wouldn't do it while he's alive, I'm sure not going to do it after he's dead. It doesn't matter, and Rasul Sallallahu said it himself, it doesn't matter how much a person has sinned in the past. Even mountains of sin, but if he brings la ilaha illallah and sincere tawbah to Allah, he really is sorry for what he did, Allah can forgive it. Rasul Sallallahu asked his companions a question. He said, do you know who is the worst of the human beings? They said, Allah wa Rasulullah alam. He said, it's the one who did so much ithm and masiyah, so many sins, that he doesn't believe Allah could forgive him. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the worst of the human beings is the one who did so many sins, that he doesn't believe that Allah could forgive him. Which means what? Always have hope that Allah forgive you. And in another rawaya he said, the worst person is the one who sits on Arafat. He made Hajj. And then he didn't believe that Allah forgave him. 
always know that Allah is a Ghafur Rahim. He's the forgiver and the merciful. But don't lose sight of the fact of the rest of the ayah. Inna Allah Ghafur Rahim wa Shadil Likab. That punishment is still there. So remember, Tawbah, 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 to repent. And these people cannot repent unless they believe in Allah and they're willing to submit to Him. And it's not my religion. The question asked it, my religion? No, it's not your religion. It's not my religion. It's His religion. Be sure to answer the question according to the way that it should be answered, not according to the way they ask it. Next. What about people that God believe in Allah but not any religion? That's pretty easy, really. I just said it. There is no religion except Allah's way. Deen doesn't mean religion. Deen is a bigger word than that. Lakum dinakum waliya deen. That's said to anybody that doesn't believe La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Including mulhid, which are atheists. You can say that to an atheist. Atheist has a deen. He has a way of life, yes. But it's not a religion, is it? So deen is bigger than that. Way of life. Complete way of life. Everybody's got a way of life. How do you want to spend it? You want to do what he wants you to do? Or what you want to do? Up to you. Forget about religion. Man-made religions are all wrong. I'll be the first to say that. You have to say that. That's what La ilaha illallah means. There isn't any other deity to worship, meaning there is no religion except Allah's way. How do you talk to people that believe in what causes pleasure and what feels good? Yeah, this is a good one. Talk to them in serious terms. You say, do you really want something that feels good? Only it keeps on going. It doesn't matter what you do in this life, it's going to run out. It will run out. When I was over in uh, Riyadh, we stopped in a store, and I was talking to one of the people that worked there. He wasn't a Muslim. And I was asking him what he'd like to do. He said, I'd like to learn to play the piano. I said, why? He said, because I want to get peace, and I believe that will give me peace in my heart. I said, external peace that you have to get from the outside and bring in will always go away. Even if it brought you peace for a while, it's going to go away. At the end of the song, then what? And what if you lose the piano? What if you can't play anymore? What if you go deaf? What do you have? People that drink alcohol, that's going to go away. Oh, for a second or two, they feel like, wow, I feel pretty good. They look pretty stupid. People smoke cigarettes. I look cool. <laughs> Wait till he gets cancer and his lip falls off. That doesn't look too cool anymore. Or you see the guy, he's got the hole here so he can breathe out of here because he's ruined his esophagus. Or he's got other problems from smoking, huh? And he wants to hold a cigarette to it. <coughs> that looks cool. All of it goes away, doesn't it? Wealth goes away. Beauty of a woman goes away. All of the things here that you want to feel good go away. How would you like to have it so it will never go away? And it only gets better and better and better. Would you like that? You want to know about a place that you can go and have anything you want, any way you want, and it's never, ever going to go away? Talk to them about Jannah. And then mention, by the way, if you don't accept it, you'll wind up in a place where you're never going to have a nice day. This question says, sometimes you're trying to call somebody to Islam, you're not able to shake their faith. How do you get over that? <clears throat> it's not our job to destroy people's faith. It's not our job to shake up their faith. The job is to present the correct faith and let them make adjustments to what they have. 
The problem that I found for most Muslims, you don't really understand your own, and you sure don't understand theirs, and then there's the communication problem, and you're saying things to them that really don't make sense. And they say, thanks anyway, I'll keep what I got. I like what I got. I recommend in this case, send them to our website. Or download one of our programs called What is Islam? And put it on a CD and do not put a label. Just put a big black question mark. Nothing else. Big black question mark. That's it. And give it to them in an envelope and say, I got a question. I got a question. Will you, will you listen to this? And tell me what you think. What is it? It's a guy in Texas. He's talking about religion. I wonder if you'll help me with this. Listen to it. Tell me what you think. It's called Share Islam. Don't tell them that. When they come back, if they say, I didn't like it. Yeah, me neither and give them something else. <laughs> but most likely they're going to say, whoa, this is some points I never thought of. Send them to the website. How do we tackle propaganda like cartoons, terrorism, marriage, misconcepts? You meant the marriage to Aisha at a young age probably, or four wives probably. Well, I know I've said it over and over tonight, I'll say it again. We've already answered that on our website. You can go to our website and get the answers to all of those because we went through them categorically. I took 14 questions, harsh attacks, that came from the Arab Christians seven years ago on the internet and we answered every single one of them. And when people take the time to listen and read, they become Muslims or at least they shut up. I call it Shahada or shut up. It happened that a gentleman came to me in a program like this and when it was all over he said, I got a question. How come you Muslims are worshiping a black box in the desert? I said, whoa, okay, got one here. Everybody sit back down, sit down, sit down. Start it up again, got the microphone back out, said, okay, here we go. And I explained to him in 20 minutes the concept of the worship is Muslims and the direction of the Qibla and the historic evidences for it and he said, Ashadu ila 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 la Ashad Muhammad Rasulullah. Jack Bear. Fantastic. But you've got to have the right knowledge and you've got to understand where they're coming from, so use our website. It's free. Shareislam.com, S H A R E I S M A M.com. How do you deal with atheists? The atheists are not the easiest to deal with. I have heard people in the past say, oh, they're the best because they already say la ilaha. <laughs> That's not true. That is not true. They are not the easiest, at least in my estimation. I happen to have one of my own sons who's an atheist. And we have tried, and brothers from right here have sat with him and tried, and we've all tried and talked to him and give him evidences, but his head is as hard as a rock. He just laughs. It's up to a lot to guide him, and I keep making it off for him every day. I hope a lot to guide him. You ask about methods, methods to convert. Let me explain something to you. I said it in the beginning, I'll say it again. You do not convert people to Islam. If anybody here thinks you can convert somebody to Islam, just forget about it. Just forget it. Don't even go there. Your job certainly is not going to be any different than the Prophet Islam. Are you in a better position than he was? I don't think so. Did he convert people? Absolutely not. There's no such thing as conversion by the sword or by force. It's a reversion back to their original state that they were in when they were born. You're asking somebody to consider a message, that's all, a message from your Creator, which is worship Him and not what He created. That's the message. In a nutshell, you can say it in two phrases and put it on a bumper sticker and parade it all over the world. Worship the Creator, 
not his creations. That's it. Worship the creator, not the creations. Yes? That's it. It's as easy as that. A person wants to know if we become... Uh, I see where they pulled the word from. You pulled it from the Arabic. Khusr. What is khusr? Khusr. Al khusrin. Huh? What is Huh? Losers? It's a state of loss, like bankruptcy. You can't pay. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, you know who the loser is? The real poor person, who is it? They, they were saying like, you know, it's the miskeen or something like that. And he said, that. The biggest loser, the biggest of all of the poorest, the, you know, is the one who comes on the day of judgment. He has a mountain of good deeds. But then the people come to take their rights on him. Until he doesn't have anything left because they took all of his good deeds. They took everything from him because of the things he did. He talked against them, he cheated them, he did so and so. Until there's nothing left for him at all. But there's still a line of people so they begin to put their deeds on him. Their bad deeds onto him and as a result he goes to hell. That's a loser. A real big time loser. It means you can't pay up on the day of judgment. It's called Yamu Hisab. Now this is a little different than maybe some heard about before. You you know about Yamu Kiyama. Kiyama to stand. That's a resurrection. To be back up again. But then there's also Yamu Hisab. And that's where you have to account for everything. Hisab means to like settle your accounts. You go to the bank and square things up, you make Hisab. But you can't make Hisab if you don't have anything to pay with, can you? You're in trouble. And one of the things that can really help you a lot is calling other people to good deeds. Because if I call you to a good deed and you do a good deed, I get the same reward, yes? So if I call everybody, do this, do this, and I'm doing it too, of course, then I get more and more and more azure. So if I don't call people, I'm losing a great opportunity to get a lot of free good deeds. Yes? I mean, maybe I pray Kamalel. I hope I do. But how much more reward will I get if I ask everybody here to do it? And now I'm going to tell you, if you don't normally pray, I mean, if you don't normally get up in the night and do camel leo, do it tonight. Do it. Get up, make wudu, and do it. And make big dua at the end of it, Allah will let you make dawah for him. And he can do it. He can just open up all kinds of doors for you. He will, inshallah. And tell him, I want to watch somebody enter Islam. I want to be there when they do it, because that's what I do every single time. I ask a lot of that over and over and over. And then since we started this journey, since we started, since I left my house to come for Hajj on the 24th day of December, since then until now, I have averaged seeing four people every day enter into Islam. But I asked for it, did you? I asked for it. And I asked for it. But I'm actually greedy. I'm asking Allah, how come it wasn't five a day? And if I had five, I know I would have asked for ten. I'm telling you that if you don't ask Allah, you're not making Allah happy. But you don't have to keep asking for new cars and bigger houses, better jobs. Ask Allah for something that's going to last for you. Ask Him. Just ask for Firdaus Allah. Say, I want the highest level of Jannah. Just ask for that. 
Every single time you pray, ask for that. After every single fard salah, there's a dua which is accepted by Allah. Hadith sahih. All you have to do after every single fard salah, just make dua. Oh Allah, this is what I need. I want this, I want that. I need to see somebody enter Islam. I want to be there, I want to watch somebody say, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad sallallahu And he will put you there. I want to see somebody enter Islam, I want to watch them learn how to make wudu. I got to do that with somebody just the other night. Took my time, took him somewhere, somebody's house, I said, let us have this room, just five minutes. I took him in there in private, because his only objection, he said, I would do it, but I got a problem. I'm afraid in this kingdom, if I said shahada, then they're going to be all over me. I said, for what? He said, well, Muslims have to pray or they beat them up over here. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Where do you get this idea? He said, somebody told me that if I become a Muslim, then I'm going to get beat up if I don't pray and I don't know how to pray. I said, okay, we're going to do two things. First, I'm going to tell you, they didn't tell you the right way. Second thing is, let's go learn how to pray. So I show him how to make wudu. He did shahada with me first, and then we did the salah. I said, what do you think? He said, alhamdulillah. I said, okay, let's go tell the people. We came out in front of the people. You were there, what did he do? A shadow. A shadow? Do it with me. A shadow? A shadow. An la ilaha? Illallah. Why a shadow? A Muhammad? Rasulullah. Takbir. Allah. Takbir. Allah. No, you all became Muslim tonight, right here. <laughs> that brought my average way up. I'm the Hilal of Bil Alameen. Who allowed you to join the Muslimin? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.